Goosebumps is an amazing film, but if you take away the special effects and CGI, it looks much different. For example, when Zack Champ and Hannah are fighting the abominable snowman, it's pretty intense. However, if you remove the effects, this is what the scene actually looks like. To get the shot of Hannah sliding, the crew had to connect the actress to a rope and pull her across the ice. The main villain of the Goosebumps movie is Slappy, but how do they bring this living dummy to life? Well, the production crew actually made a real ventriloquist dummy that was controlled by a puppeteer named Avery Jones. To erase Avery, he had to wear a green bodysuit. This made it easier for the post-production team to remove the puppeteer from all the scenes where he was visible. In some cases, a second person was needed to move Slappy. Not only were there two puppeteers on set, but there were also two versions of Slappy. This second Slappy wasn't a real ventriloquist doll, it was more like a statue. It never appeared in the movie, and was just a stand-in that the crew could use to get the lighting right. Once the lights were perfect, the second Slappy would be taken out and the real ventriloquist dummy Slappy was brought in. In some cases, like when Slappy is walking, the living dummy is 100% computer generated. If you look closely, you can tell when there's a real Slappy doll on camera and when he's CG. Also, it's worth mentioning that the first design of the movie Slappy was much different. He looked a bit more edgy, but I'm glad they didn't use this design. What about the other Goosebumps monsters? How were they brought to life? Well, many of them were really in front of the camera. Creatures like Murder the Clown, The Haunted Mask, even the Scarecrow and the Pumpkin Head were all practical effects and just used really good makeup, costumes, and actors to bring them to life. However, some other monsters required a bit more work. The Abominable Snowman was 100% CGI, and a lot of times there would be nothing on set for the actors to react to. However, sometimes the filmmakers would use a balloon with the snowman's face to show where the monster was supposed to be. Likewise, the werewolf was another monster that was all CGI, for the most part. Sometimes, a stunt person would wear a green bodysuit and use walking sticks to imitate how a werewolf would run. This provided the visual effects team with a reference to work off of, and it also gave the actors something to interact with. However, there were other werewolf scenes where nothing was there, and the monster was added in later. The scene where Arl Stein, who's played by Jack Black, is hiding from the werewolf used a lot of visual effects. Not only was there no werewolf, but the spit that falls onto Stein's face was also computer generated. I always assumed they used a real prop for the spit, but it does make the unedited footage of Jack Black pretty funny to watch. Another monster that was CG'd in after filming was the plants. However, seeing how the cast and crew filmed those scenes is kind of interesting. During the scene where the monsters attack the school, Zack and Stein beat up the killer plants. However, on set, the actors just had to beat up a big green cushion held by a crew member. If they just had the actors swing at the air, the scene would look weird even after adding in the evil plants, since the actors' hits didn't have any impact. By having them smack the cushion, it made it appear like the characters were hitting the monster. One of my favorite scenes in the whole movie is at the end, when the real Arl Stein makes an appearance. However, a lot more gets revealed when you look at the scene from a different angle. A crew member is standing in the hall that Stein walks out of, and there are two students on the other end waiting for their cue to walk out. It's nothing crazy, but it is interesting seeing what a movie looks like when you rotate the camera. Another example of this is when Zack and Hannah first meet. If you pull back the camera just a bit, you can see a big white board below Zack. This is a trick movie makers use. The white light that reflects from the board helps brighten the actor's face so they show up better on camera. Now here's something really interesting. The amusement park Zack and Hannah go to was sort of real and sort of fake. They filmed the scene outdoors and built a real park set. However, they only made half of the Ferris wheel. This was to cut down the workload and save some money. So then, how did they film the shots of Zack and Hannah on top of the ride? That was all shot in a green screen studio. The crew built just a section of the Ferris wheel for the scenes where the characters are sitting inside the cart. Then, in post-production, the visual Visual effects artists made it look like Zack and Hannah were outside and high above the ground. Similar to that scene, the scenes where the characters are riding in Arl Stein's car were shot in a studio. The actors were inside a real vehicle, but it wasn't moving at all. You can see what a car scene without the visual effects would look like in this clip. I'm not sure how the rest of your night looks, but uh, we might head up this dance. Okay, we'll have to check my schedule. Great Wall of China, force field. 
In the climax of the movie, Arlstein gets captured by the blob. To pull off this effect, Jack Black was attached to ropes and hung above the floor with a green screen background. Then, the visual effects crew removed the wires and the background and added in the blob, so it looked like Black was stuck inside the monster. In addition to the behind the scenes, the Goosebumps movie also had a lot of secrets hidden in the film. To see them for yourself, watch the video on screen.